guys, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you 10 things to try and avoid in your skincare products. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I am a board certified dermatologist. I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps my videos out a lot. All right, you guys, this list of 10 things is by no means a hard and fast, you cannot use these ingredients in skincare products. It's merely meant to point out ingredients that commonly can cause problems in skincare products and often have no purpose or maybe there is an alternative that would be better. Ingredient number one to look out for is something called methyl isothiazolinone. I'll spell it out here. This is a preservative commonly found in products that are water-based. It's intended to uh, prevent contamination. Unfortunately, it can and often does cause contact dermatitis. You'll frequently find it in rinse off products like shampoos. The reason I point it out is it's a common allergen, but there are other preservatives out there that do just as good a job keeping the product safe, but are less likely to cause allergies for people. So it's one to try and avoid, or at least try and minimize your exposure to it. You know, if you've got something that you're currently using and it's got methyl isothiazolinone in it, do not throw it out. It's, it's safe to use, but overall it is an ingredient, a preservative that is probably the most likely of all the preservatives to cause problems. And it's something to be mindful of because maybe you are allergic to it or your skin is easily irritated by it. it. It commonly does cause problems. So it's something that you can easily look out for. More and more it's being phased out. Um, but I do see it a lot, for example, in a lot of the skincare products in the Dollar Tree, I've noticed it a lot. So just be mindful of it. Um, it is a preservative that, that can commonly cause problems. <laughs> People always fear monger around parabens, but they're actually less likely to cause problems uh, in comparison to, to MI or methyl isothiazolinone. Number two is fragrance. All right, you guys know I try and encourage you as best you're able to avoid fragrance and skincare products, especially those that are left on the skin like moisturizers, sunscreens, Fragrance and things that you rinse off, like shampoos and conditioners, less likely to cause problems. But fragrance, it is a common cause of skin allergy. And fragrance ingredients, they, oxi they can oxidize into more irritating compounds, not only contact dermatitis, but a type of uh, hyperpigmentation. For example, you can develop uh, discoloration in the armpits due to a fragrance ingredient called limonene. Um, it can cause what's called a pigmented contact dermatitis. It doesn't really feel like a rash, but you look in your armpits and you notice that you've got a lot of discoloration and dark marks. A lot of people are, you know, want to fade that and they're wondering like what can be done about it. It might, your deodorant might actually be the culprit if it's got fragrance in it. Uh, that has been known to, to occur. So, you know, again, if you've got a product that you're using and it has fragrance in it, don't throw it out, continue to use it. It's not a demon ingredient, but it is a common culprit. A lot of fragrance ingredients, they cause vasodilation, which basically means the blood vessels become dilated, and this can lead to redness, make you, your skin more likely to become irritated, and certain fragrance ingredients are co-sensitizing, meaning it makes it more likely you will develop an allergy to something else in the new product. And some fragrance ingredients are also uh, photosensitizing, meaning they can make you more sensitive to the sun. Uh, for example, a lot of people uh, don't realize this, but perfume sprayed on the neck can make your skin more sensitive to sunlight and cause uh, more accelerated photo aging of the neck, something called uh, poikiloderma of savat. So I always recommend if you're somebody who likes to wear perfume, that rather than spray it on your neck, which is gonna see a lot of sun, instead spray it somewhere that is not sun exposed, like your hip or your waistband. Speaking of photosensitivity, the next thing you wanna try your best to avoid, or at least minimize exposure to, is going to be citrus oils, especially products that are meant to be left on the skin. Citrus oils can increase your sensitivity to sunlight. Citrus oils include things like lime peel oil, lemon oil, uh, citrus oil, and oil of bergamot. Um, a lot of these citrus oils, the manufacturers take steps to remove compounds from them that are photosensitizing, but they do still contain different compounds that can oxidize and cause problems, cause irritation, and that you can develop an allergy to. So 
try and avoid them. The other thing about citrus oils is they've got some of the same, con they've got compounds in them that are fragrance that are known to cause problems, namely limonene. Limonene is a very common sensitizer and it can, it can oxidize. You know, again, if you've got a product that has a citrus oil in it or whatever, don't throw it away. Uh, you know, it's not like putting it on, you're, you know, you're gonna acutely have some sort of problem. But overall, this family of ingredients can frequently cause problems. So best to minimize your exposure to it. All right, number four is neomycin. This is an antibiotic that you'll find in neosporin and it is useless, but people love it. People love neosporin, but it is a problematic ingredient. First of all, it is not the best antibiotic ointment. It's not the best antibiotic. I mean, it's really not that great at uh, targeting the spectrum of microbes necessary that you know your a, a cup is going to come in contact with. Uh, the other reason neomycin is so problematic is that it is a very common cause of contact dermatitis, and um, so people gravitate towards neosporin for a cut. But I have to tell you guys, the uh, the thing that helps a cut that is in neosporin is petrolatum, AKA Vaseline. And it's no better than plain petrolatum in terms of healing and in terms of uh, reducing infections. Uh, this has been shown in, in studies that, uh, you know, when applied to a wound, petrolatum is equally as effective as neosporin in terms of healing and infection rate, but neosporin comes with that risk of contact dermatitis. So I don't recommend using neosporin. I wish they would just take it off the market. It causes a lot of problems. Number five, we already talked about fragrance, but one fragrance uh, ingredient, if you will, is something that you should look out for and try your best to avoid. And it is balsam of Peru. Now balsam of Peru is so sensitizing. There's actual talk of banning it. Despite the talk of banning it, where do you find it? Diaper rash cream. <laughs> Balsam of Peru is very sensitizing and using it in a diaper rash cream, I mean, that should have been the first type of product that they removed Balsam of Peru from, is a diaper rash cream. Why? Well, your risk of developing a problem to Balsam of Peru is gonna be greater when you're applying it to delicate skin, AKA baby skin, when you're applying it to skin that is has, has the, the barriers impaired, AKA diaper dermatitis, diaper rash, and third, when you are applying it under occlusion, AKA under a diaper. Uh, so yeah, I'm. what comes to mind to me as far as a diaper rash cream that has balsam of Peru in it is Balmex. Some of you may be going, okay, well, I'm not, you know, I don't have a baby, but I do know a lot of you guys use diaper rash cream because it is, actually is a good um, skin protectant. I often recommend in, to people and in several of my videos, to use it anywhere where you have skin on skin friction, areas that are prone to chafing because it is a good skin protectant and it's kind of soothing, it's anti-inflammatory, but be on the lookout for uh, diaper rash creams that have balsam of Peru. Um, it's a common cause of uh, contact allergy and once you develop an allergy to balsam of Peru, there are a lot of compounds that cross react with it and it can be so bad to have an allergy to balsam of Peru. Finding products is very, very challenging that you won't react to. And some people's balsam of Peru allergy is so severe, they actually have to go on a special diet. Um, and the, um, because it's present actually in certain foods that we ingest, but you can become so sensitized to it and develop such a bad dermatitis and, and response to it that it you even have reactions to ingesting it. And it's in colas, um, a lot of tomato-based, things, so you can't have Tex-Mex, you can't have like Italian food, pasta sauce, um, it's in vermouth, coffee, I mean chocolate, it's in a lot of things. And a balsam of Peru free diet, for some people with balsam of Peru, allergy is necessary and is really, really restrictive and not fun. So yeah, I don't understand why Balmex still has balsam of Peru in there. I mean. There's really no need to have fragrance in a diaper rash cream. And in this case, it's very likely to, to lead to contact dermatitis because again, of the situation where you're applying it on uh, fragile skin that is inflamed and under occlusion. 
Number six, essential oils. You have to be on the lookout for these. Essential oils are similar to fragrance. They have the same ingredients as synthetic fragrance. They have the same compounds, I will say, as synthetic fragrance. Limonene, linalool. And the issue here is that a lot of products will be labeled as fragrance-free, but still have essential oils in the product. Manufacturers can get around and call a product fragrance-free, but still put these essential oils in the product because maybe they have another function. See, disclosure of fragrance is you know, it is a loosey-goosey area and you have to read labels very carefully. And essential oils, unlike synthetic fragrance that just is the compounds, essential oils are kind of a mixed bag of different things. Uh, so they're not as stable as, uh, you know, even synthetic fragrance. They can uh, oxidize and they're more likely to cause irritation and problems. Um, so try and avoid them again, especially in leave on, uh, leave on products. I, you know, I use products that have these ingredients in them, but they're primarily in things that at least get rinsed off the skin. Number seven, uh, certain synthetic dyes you may want to try and avoid if you, especially if you are acne prone. Um, synthetic dyes, DNC red, um, DNC red 3, 30, 36, 40, and 27. Why? Um, well, these are actually derived from coal tar, and when Come, when that comes in contact with the skin, it can be, it can aggravate acne. It's not the case for everybody. And so, you know, if you, if you don't have problems with red dyes, there's really no need to necessarily avoid them. But if you're somebody with acne, pay attention. Do you notice that it gets worse when you use things that have red dyes? If so, avoid. Yours truly, I use products that have red dyes. I've never had an issue with them. But the DNC dyes, I'll list them down below, you guys. Um, 40 and 27 tend to be the most problematic, but any of them can cause issues for people with acne. So again, you know, it's not a hard and fast rule. Do not use things with this with these ingredients, but if you notice you have problems, then definitely avoid. All right, the next one is kind of similar to the issue with the red dyes, and that is coconut oil. Coconut oil is in a ton of natural skincare products, and it's not a bad ingredient. Actually, it's been shown that when applied to the skin of people with eczema, uh, because it's got, um, you know, it's moisturizing and it has some antibacterial properties, it's actually been shown to help improve some of the lesions of eczema. Um, however, many people report that it aggravates their acne. It's thought to perhaps be comedogenic, which in and of itself is a loosey-goosey, poorly defined term. Uh, it's hard to actually truly uh, classify something as comedogenic or not, but that is one that time and time again for people with acne rears its head as being problematic. Now, a variety of ingredients are derived from coconut oil. And that doesn't seem to be an issue for people with acne. It's, it's just coconut oil as is. So, and again, it's not everyone. If you use products that have coconut oil and they don't bother you, everything's fine. Like myself, I use moisturizing products that have coconut oil, no issue. I've never had an issue with anything with coconut oil. But you should be mindful of it, especially if you have acne and you notice that products that have it aggravate the acne, then that would be one to avoid. All right, number nine is something I think everybody should avoid, um, and that is facial scrubs, uh, mechanical facial scrubs. Uh, you, you know, people talk about the St. Ives one a lot, but there are tons out there. They're often marketed as like microdermabrasion scrubs, and they have, um, you know, little shards of you know, organic material that intends to lift up dead skin cells and exfoliate them away. But it's not super precise and it can create little tiny tears in the moisture barrier that leads to more water loss. Ultimately, that can cause a lot of dryness, irritation, and it can make you more prone to flares of acne and it can make the skin more vulnerable, especially if you're somebody whose skin heals with hyperpigmentation, it can really open you up for more problems. You've got irritation on there. Um, you know, it's, it's just a setup for, for problems. So I, I don't think anybody, those are good. Um, you know, if you use them, fine, but I would caution you against using them on the face, especially. I think they're okay to use um, on like the feet. <laughs> That's where I use them from time to time to kind of exfoliate the callus. 
Um, I've used them on my upper arms to exfoliate away keratosis pilaris, that dry skin condition where you've got built up dry skin around the follicle. Um, but even that can end up causing a lot of dryness long term that ultimately worsens the keratosis pilaris issue. So be very careful with them. Don't overdo it if you do use them. And I caution you against using those types of products on the face because they can be very irritating. Last but not least, this is a really important one that you have got to be aware of and avoid. And that is, um, tanning products with a low SPF. I have a whole video about this, but I wanted to bring it up again today because we're getting into the warmer months where people wanna wear shorts and you may be looking into some tanning products. Avoid these at all costs. They are dangerous and should be taken off the market. What exactly am I talking about? These are products that have maybe an SPF of 15 or lower and they are tanning products. Uh, so they're intended to help you get a tan. And you may be misled into thinking that, oh, if I use a product like this, it's protecting me from UV, but I'm gonna get a tan, cool, no. Um, they're actually very problematic. Um, the way these work is they will block a little bit of the burning rays. And in doing so, that allows you to stay out in the sun much longer so that you get a tan, which is mediated by UVA. So the products do not protect you from UVA. And as a result, you end up exposing yourself to a lot of the really damaging UVA rays that destroy your collagen, suppress the skin's immune system, uh, impair tumor surveillance, lead to skin cancers down the road. So these products are problematic because they take, they basically take away, you know, a sunburn is a bad thing to have, but at least, the, you know, a sunburn is kind of like a clue at least to get out of the sun. If you take that away, you're just kind of numbing out a little bit and exposing yourself to a lot of, a lot of damage. It's kind of like, I don't know, putting, coating yourself with a topical anesthetic and then you know trying to walk through a fire. So do not use those products. These are not actual sunscreens. They, they have sunscreen ingredients in them that will block out some UVB, but they're not broad spectrum. They're not covering all of the UVA. And as a result, you're gonna end up getting way too much sun. And they encourage you to be out in the sun getting a tan, which is not safe. A uh, tan is a form of skin injury. Um, it basically is a wounding response. So yeah, strongly discourage the use of those products. Um, and I wanted to bring it up again here because I know I have a lot of new viewers and again, getting into the warmer months. So I want you guys to not be duped into those. As a side note, if you are motivated to have a bronze look going you know, into the warmer months, uh, use a sunless tanner with dihydroxyacetone. That is a safe ingredient, much safer than these types of products or you know, laying out in the sun or God forbid, don't ever go in a tanning bed. That, will, that increases your risk for skin cancer uh, tremendously. So um, yeah, don't use, the, don't use the low SPF tanning products. Instead, just use a sunless tanner of your choosing. I cannot really recommend any because I don't use them, but uh, they are they are okay to use. And they do have fragrance in them in most cases, but actually uh, I've come to learn that a lot of brands are not putting fragrance in. Um, all right, check in the description box. I'm gonna list everything I talked about. And because I mentioned fragrance and it is such a large category of different ingredients, it can be a very confusing area to navigate. I'm gonna list down below in the description box some of the common names that fragrance ingredients go by so that you can look out for them. And again, if you're using a product that has some of these ingredients that, we, that I mentioned today, you know, it's not like you have to throw it out or anything. But there are things to be mindful of that, you know, if you develop problems, these are common culprits and try and minimize your exposure to them, especially in leave on forms of products like, you know, creams, lotions, serums, what have you, sunscreen. So those are 10 things to try your best to avoid in your skincare products or minimize your exposure to. Uh, I hope this video is helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.